Welcome back to Rowdy Rounds. I'm Rowdy. Thank you for coming. Let's see. Going to talk about Justin Trudeau, and he has now put the boot to Canada. And we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, Russia and the United States and Ukraine and the Donbass region and a little bit of history. So stick around. You know, we should be doing pretty good. Uh, we're going to talk about Canada first. Uh, anybody that's been watching any of the news knows that the Freedom Convoy was shut down. The police shut it down. They seized the trucks, impounded lots of them, arrested well over 100 people. The lead organizer was uh, arrested and at a bail hearing was denied bail. Uh, pretty much it's over. <clears throat> uh, the government has the banks freezing the assets, uh, the money of the people involved. Uh, you even have, uh, I believe, council persons talking about uh, auctioning off the trucks that they towed. In other words, uh, you know, through their little emergency act, uh, basically, Canada has now taken over the rights of the many. Uh, you basically got no rights to protest there. If you're protesting, you'll be declared a terrorist and you'll be arrested. You know, um, there's not really that much to say. You can uh, look at the video and you can see where the woman was actually um, hit by the horse. Um, there's been questions about whether or not she was actually trampled, but there was definitely contact between her and the horse. You can see in other video where one of the drivers was arrested and you could see uh, police putting the knee into him pretty hard. Uh, which calls into question the police tactics because I don't recall seeing any protesters fighting back. And if any of you do have a video that shows that or protesters actually assaulting police or anyone else, share, please. Of course, now the response in Washington, D.C., to the Freedom Convoy and to President Biden's State of the Union address was all the fences in D.C. are back up. So now we are once again functioning with a fenced-in capital. If, you know, <laughs> what can you say? The president has to be protected from, what, harsh language? Because there's talk of a freedom convoy going to Washington, D.C. However, I think now that they'll probably go somewhere else uh, if they're wise. The freedom convoy in Canada was a great idea. It was a fantastic idea but they never had backup come. They didn't have more people come in. They didn't have more people show up. Uh, they needed a crowd about four to five times as big as what they had. They should have had trucks lined up for 100 miles in every direction. They should have had people wall to wall all over the city. And unfortunately, they just didn't have enough. And that's really unfortunate. Because if they would have had a bigger crowd, they might have had a better chance. Because now, it's kind of like a dog once it's tasted blood killing chickens. When government steps out like that, they have a habit of doing it again. So it's not too hard to imagine 
a declaration that a region or a city or a district is terrorist laden and assets of everyone in that region or district or county being frozen. They've already done it. The, the shock value isn't there. It's already been done. And you can say they haven't gotten away with it, but the truth is they have. Nobody can do a damn thing about it. Not one thing. The protest is over. They had their chance, and unfortunately, it passed them by. Because the people didn't congeal and draw into that area. There was no multiplier effect. <clears throat> they love trying to draw lines between terrorism and any kind of a right-wing protest. And that's a mindset that we need to keep in mind because that's how they are putting us down. That's how they're putting anybody to the right of hard left down. And they're going to continue to do that. Now, if you do a little reading, you'll see that the objective of terrorism is to make the people so afraid of the terrorists that the people themselves pressure the government to give the terrorists what they want so it will stop. That's terrorism. A bunch of protesters in the streets blocking traffic, demanding due process demanding their rights back. That's not terrorism. We've all seen the news. We've all watched it on TV with the protests where you've got people burning down cities. And yet, They declare the protest of citizens that just want to go on with their lives. Terrorism. You need to stop and think about that. Okay, you're saying, Rowdy, okay, you know, you're putting a lot of this down, but you're not putting any other information out. Well, I'm not going to leave you hanging. There are ways to do things. And what needs to happen if you're trying to put pressure on government in today's environment of cancel culture and of accusing your opponent of worst case scenario, trumped up charges, penalty before the law even has a chance to look at what's happened. What you need to do is it needs to be more spread out. Concentrated groups in more spread out areas. You need to infect more people. It needs to be a huge effort. You need to select a hundred cities and none of them being the capital. But all of them major cities. We need to have employee walkouts, which is a drop in production. We need to have cancel culture working against them. You need to go to advertisers and explain to these advertisers. We're going to use our reach to reach the people. And we're going to cancel your product 
if you don't stop supporting this and not just don't just do it once or twice and call it success you do it over and over and over to more and more advertisers until it is crushing And don't say it won't work, because if the left can make it work, the right can make it work. The right knows how to make the reach. Now, the money thing, you can't use banking. Not when they're freezing your assets. You can't. You're going to have to use cash, hard, cold cash, and denominations low enough that it won't be illegal to move it around the country. So you're going to need a lot of people doing this. You're going to have to have a business that will quietly become your central banker and hold the cash in their own possession and disperse the cash as per instruction through couriers to the locations where it's needed. That's how this is done. There's always a way. And I'm not saying the things I'm telling you now are the only way. There are others. We just have to be willing to move forward. And when I say we, I mean the United States and Canada. Okay? We have a right to protest here. And if they start shutting down our right to protest, we do need to go ahead and engage these tactics. I'm not citing anything illegal. I'm not encouraging anything illegal. I'm not encouraging violence of any kind whatsoever. I am encouraging using the same methods that the left uses to persecute the right. We're just going to do it better. We're going to do it bigger, longer, and harder. Okay, that's it for Canada. They'll have to figure out how they're going to go forward from this. Hopefully they can get some political backing. Because really, that's about the only option they have left. Russia, 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 Russia. As much as the Democrats love yelling Russia, this is truly amazing to me that they're not yelling it now. (laughs) Truly amazing. Now, what has happened, and I'm going to be uh, throwing some history in here on this. So you're going to have to work with me and listen. Okay. A little bit of history is under the Biden-Obama administration. Well, then the Obama-Biden administration, but they seem to be interchangeable even now. Vladimir Putin sent troops into Crimea and converted Crimea from Ukraine back to Russia. What a lot of people do not understand is that under the USSR, the Soviet Union, Crimea was awarded to Ukraine as a gift from the premier at the time from Russia. Over the years, um, the fleet stationed out of Crimea, many, many sailors and soldiers that were in this area when they got out of the service stayed in Crimea. A considerable percentage of the population of Crimea are ethnic Russians. So, you know, of course, you're not going to hear that from the president. However, it's not surprising when these people are unhappy and would rather be part of Russia that Russia would take that province back, being that basically the USSR was an expression of Russia and Russia had given control of Crimea to Ukraine and now they're seeing Russian peoples being disenfranchised so they took Crimea back. There's your story. Now, 
at the same time that the Russians took Crimea back, there was insurrection in the Donbass region of Ukraine. And it has continued for eight years ever since. And there, it's basically been a low-key shooting war in the Donbass region where, where there's two major uh, objective cities of Russia. So when Vladimir Putin says that he's going in to these breakaway provinces, it's, it's pretty much already a done deal. Up to 800,000 people in that region are carrying Russian passports. The dollar of the day there is the Russian ruble. These people want to be part of Russia. You can say, well, they were part of Ukraine first. These are lines that were drawn in the wars for most of these places when republics became part of the Soviet Union, and then when the Soviet Union dissolved, those lines got redrawn again and again. There's still a lot of ethnic Russians in the Donbass region. And Russia has been providing them support this entire time. The only difference now is, is Russian troops are actually going into the Donbass region. Because the Ukrainians are being accused of ethnic cleansing in those areas. I don't have any information to the affirmative or negative on that issue. However, <coughs> excuse me, it's pertinent to understand the past, to understand the present and the future. When President Biden shut down all kinds of petroleum ventures and enterprises in the United States, we started purchasing more and more petroleum from Russia. The numbers fluctuate between 12 and 26 million barrels a day a month come to the United States from Russia. And now, as a result of President Putin going into the Donbass region of Ukraine, Germany, parts of the European Union, and the United States have exacted sanctions on Russia. Well, if you think that Russia is going to keep selling 12 to 26 million barrels of petroleum to the United States, you might want to check yourself. We hurt them, they can hurt us. And on top of that, OPEC just told Joe Biden they cannot increase production. That is why Joe Biden has immediately come out to the people and said that this issue with Ukraine is going to hurt the United States with higher gas prices. Yeah. And President Biden could change direction, open up drilling, Authorized Keystone XL 2. Okay, offshore drilling. Okay, drilling and movement of oil out of the Anwar region of Alaska. In a very short period of time, we would be right back to being at least close to energy independent. Have you noticed that? That subject doesn't seem to be on the table. Kind of amazing how it's so important to sanction Russia for sending troops into an area where they've been supporting the insurrectionists for the last eight years. And now, President Biden wants to do something about it. Yeah. Of course, he'll do something about Russia, but he won't do something about our own lack of petroleum. 
he wants to throw fits about the sanctity of the borders of Ukraine while turning the United States' southern border into a sieve. They protested the blockade of the northern border of the United States into Canada by that Freedom Convoy. However, not a word when you have billions of dollars worth of drugs, constant open sex trafficking of up to 40% of the women coming across the southern border. And the least of it would be them having to pay for their transportation with sexual favors. There's also much, much worse happening there, according to reports. So, pretty much, uh, President Biden could end this problem with Russia like that. All he has to do is recognize that those, those, the Donbass region has been this way ever since Crimea went back to Russia. It's an ongoing issue. There's no resolution other than one that's in place is you have people there in insurrection supporting a return of that area to Mother Russia. It's within President Biden's abilities to restart drilling, to restart exploration, to restart the extraction of oil in a very short time in these problems for the United States. And by contrast, that would lower the gas prices if the fuel was plentiful and we were no longer purchasing everything from abroad. But he doesn't seem to be interested in that. Wouldn't even didn't even speak of it in case you didn't notice. Okay, that's it. That's pretty much all I've got to say. Um, I have a new uh, support. If you want to support me and the channel, you can uh, send me money through buymeacoffee.com slash rowdy rants. Any donation would be appreciated. Or just drop me a line at rants at protonmail.com. I'd be happy to hear from any of you. You can also comment below. Give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. My name's Rowdy. These are my rants. You have a great day.